microphones are on. This time I'd like to call the ordinance committee meeting to order at approximately, I believe it's about 6.13 p.m. on Tuesday evening, February the 4th, 2014. I just want to take uh, a moment to introduce the members of the committee uh, to you. To my far left, City Council from Ward 1, uh, Tim Cruz. City Council from Ward 5, Dennis Dinapoli. City Council from Ward 2, uh, Tom Monahan. City Council at Large, Jay Stewart. Don't follow the sign, I'm not Moises Rodriguez. <laughs> my name is Dennis Aneri, City Council from Ward uh, 3, and I am the uh, chairperson of uh, the committee uh, this year. I also want to uh, introduce our legal counsel, um, Mr. Mark Gilday. Attorney Mark Gilday is uh, sitting right there at the center, and, and of course, a couple of other colleagues that are here. I believe uh, City Council at Large, Sh Shana Barnes, is here. I, I know our City Council President, Bob Sullivan, is here, and I believe the counsel from Ward 7, uh, Shirley Azak, is also uh, present this evening. I also want to take time to thank all of you uh, for being here this evening. Uh, it's a very, very important ordinance that's come before this committee. No different than a lot of other ordinances that come before the ordinance committee. And for those of us that have sh you know, uh, sat as members of the ordinance uh, uh, committee before, we, we know um, how lengthy a meeting can be with, with ordinance changes. And that's what governs the city of Brockton is the ordinances um, you know, that, that make up the, the government of, of the city. Um, I just want to set a little bit of a tone to how our meeting works. This is a, again, regular meeting of the ordinance committee. It is not a public hearing. We have invited guests that have been uh, invited to attend, which I'll read those names in a moment. And, and at that point, we will hear from those invited guests. And after we hear from the invited guests, naturally, we always turn to any of our colleagues that sit as city councils. If they wish to be heard on, a, on an issue, they have every right to, to do so. And that's the makeup of the meeting this evening. Again, we thank all of you for being here and being a part of the process and, and wanting to come and listen. And at that point in time, um, after we have concluded with everything, uh, I'm just not too sure which direction the, the meeting may go uh, as to any type of deliberation this evening, uh, whether or not a vote would be heard, I'm not sure of, and, and whether or not it gets postponed, a table. We don't know that. We, we don't know that until we get to the, um, to the end of the, uh, the meeting. But in any case, um, just so everybody knows, uh, this, this ordinance that's before us was, um, is being presented to us uh, by Mayor Bill Carpenter, and it's uh, amending Chapter 19 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton. It's being ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Chapter 19, which is the Police Department. Uh, all members present, I believe, have a copy of that said ordinance um, in front of us, and those are the items and issues that we will be um, talking about as well uh, as a part of this uh, change to the uh, to the ordinance and what it is doing is is establishing the position of commissioner of police sides from how it has always been in lieu of having a chief of police so that's what the ordinance is about um, this evening uh, and as I mentioned to you we do have some invited guests Mayor uh, Carpenter will be um, be speaking Miss um, Maureen Cruz is here as our personnel director we have Lieutenant Don uh, Mills, he's Supervisor Association from the Police Department and Officer Bill Healy uh, as the Patrolman Association from the Police Department. We're also invited to, to attend um, this evening. So um, at this point in time, um, as we all know, this is being televised. Usually our committee meetings, subcommittee meetings are not televised, but this one is. And anyone that speaks has to go to the podium, which you see has been turned around so that it uh, can be heard at home by the, uh, the folks. So, at this point in time, unless uh, any other councils have any questions or concerns, then I will um, begin with uh, having uh, Mayor Carpenter come to the podium and uh, present um, his uh, issue in regards to this particular uh, uh, ordinance. Mayor Carpenter. Thank you, Mr. Chair and councillors and members of the committee, other councillors in attendance. Uh, great to be back here with you this evening. I almost feel like I never left. <laughs> Uh, the ordinance that you have before you I have filed with the committee for consideration and the purpose of this ordinance is to give me the authority as mayor to appoint a civilian commissioner of police under very limited circumstances. Uh, the most important circumstance being that in the event that the uh, police chief's position is vacant. Um, the um, 
a little background as to how we came to filing the ordinance. I think that uh, all of you know that uh, uh, Chief Hayden has been advising me on public safety issues for over a year now. Over that period of time, uh, we've developed a very close working relationship. And I've just been impressed that he is the most knowledgeable law enforcement person I've ever met in my life. I've provided the committee with copies of his resume, so I won't bore you with going into great detail. Uh, but this is an individual who, as the, uh, as the deputy superintendent in the city of Boston, established that city's first gang unit. Uh, when we had Mayor Flynn in town on Friday and he described uh, Chief Hayden, he said that during his tenure as mayor, he always gave Bob Hayden the toughest assignments. He was the officer he had the most confidence in. Uh, Chief Hayden went on to Lawrence in the 90s and over the course of a few years dramatically reduced uh, what was a crime-ridden city when he arrived. From there, uh, Chief Hayden went on to serve on a statewide basis as Undersecretary of Public Safety, overseeing state law enforcement agencies under Governor Salucci, and then uh, also went on to serve in a supervisory role with the T Police. He has decades and decades of successful urban law enforcement experience, and he's a gentleman that I have the utmost confidence in. As the newly elected mayor, I think that appointing a police chief to work with is the, the most important appointment that a mayor faces. And I'll be making a lot of decisions surrounding appointments and filling positions and building a team for us to work together with. But I think from the perspective of the mayor, you know, there's chief of staff and there's chief of police, and those are the two people that you're going to work most closely with, and those are the two people that you're going to rely upon the most. And I think it's critical for any mayor to be able to select the person that he or she wants to lead the police department and the person they have the most confidence in and the person they feel they can work with most closely and most successfully. And for me, that person is Bob Hayden. And that's why I appointed him as an interim chief of police on Friday to fill the vacancy for a period of up to 60 days. The, as we progress towards today and after the election, through the campaign at the Arnon School public meeting, uh, Chief Hayden has been at my side and I've always introduced him as my advisor on public safety. And as we came uh, after winning the election, it was very clear to me that he was the person I wanted to lead the Brockton Police Department. If there, is one, if there was one overwhelming theme to the campaign we all went through last year was that Violent crime, public safety is the number one concern of the residents of this city. It's the number one issue that will drive our success or failure as a city in the future. We absolutely positively must reduce violent crime. We must get guns and drugs off the streets of the city. We must create a safe, livable neighborhood city where families want to buy homes and raise their children, where businesses want to come and expand and open and it all revolves around our success in being able to reduce crime in the city of Brockton. I think an individual like Bob Hayden offers us a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to bring someone with his vast experience and reputation and credibility and relationships with other law enforcement agencies at all levels, county, state, federal, um, to organize a new effort in this city utilizing some different techniques and some additional resources that have not been used before. And I think the vast majority of the residents of this city are screaming for us to do something different, to try something else, because we're all frustrated that barely a night goes by that there are not shots fired in this city. And it's time for that to change. I think Bob Hayden is a leader who will restore morale to the Brockton Police Department. He will restore trust in the Brockton Police Department for the residents who live here. He will lead and he will be effective in reducing crime in our city. So as we approach this, 
I um, made the decision pretty quickly after the election that I need Bob Hayden to lead the Brockton Police, and I asked him to do so. I asked him if he would help us. And it's been well publicized, and you know, Bob is 71 years old and was not looking for a job. I asked him if he would come here and help us for a while because I think we have an opportunity to benefit by him being here. And part of his role in serving as a civilian commissioner of police will be to help me identify who the next permanent uniform chief of police should be. And so let me state very clearly that I am not looking to get away from the model of a uniform chief of police. It is my full intention upon Mr. Hayden completing his service to appoint a uniform chief of police that I hope will come from the ranks of the Brockton Police Department, but in any event will be the person that I think is best poised to lead Brockton, but it will be, we will return to a police chief, uniform, traditional model. I am asking for this ordinance for a one-time opportunity to put the right person at the right time for this city to lead our police department and to effect change. And, you know, I usually believe in promoting from within, and I've advocated for that very strongly on the school department over the past four years. But I do think sometimes it makes sense to bring someone in from the outside to really affect change. And I think at this point in the history of this city and at the current status of the Brockton Police Department, this is one of those times that it makes sense to bring someone in from the outside and for us to have this opportunity to bring in someone like Mr. Hayden with his vast experience and expertise, um, we're crazy if we don't seize this opportunity. Um, I did, in my meetings with individual counselors back in the second week of December, I was very open and had honest discussions with all counselors, with Mr. Hayden sitting at my side and stated my intention that I anticipated Chief Gomes stepping aside at some point early on and that it would be my intention to ask the council for an ordinance that would allow me to appoint Mr. Hayden as a civilian commissioner of police. For those that may not be familiar with what the issue is and why I'm asking for this, there's only one issue. State law prohibits me from appointing him as chief of police due to the fact that he's over 65 years old. And that's the only reason that I'm asking for this ordinance. Um, because, uh, because of the fact that I want to seize this opportunity, have Mr. Hayden leave the, lead this police department, and I need a civilian commissioner of police position in order to do that. I listened to some concerns that were expressed by counselors right around the time I was sworn in. We had a working draft of what we thought this ordinance might look like. I met with a number of counselors individually and there were a couple of concerns expressed. And I addressed those. We made some amendments to the ordinance. The concerns were counselors wanted to make sure that my appointment of this civilian commissioner would be subject to council approval. Under a prior administration, that was an issue with this council of a police chief being appointed and never being brought in front of this uh, committee for confirmation. And I pledged that I would not do that and I put some language into the, the ordinance you have in front of you now that requires council approval. Uh, additionally, there was another concern raised around the issue of length of service and that this ordinance, if it's granted, not be abused, that it be a tool to address our current situation today but not leave room for abuse or, or an, an open-ended time of service. And so to address that, we inserted some language that limits the time of service to 12 months. So I think that it's clear that I've had an openness and a willingness to work with the council to craft an ordinance that will meet our needs today, that the councilors are confident in and feel comfortable with. And I, I understand that this ordinance committee has a great responsibility that uh, you're going to work to hopefully craft an ordinance that you can recommend to the full council. So along those lines, if over the course of this hearing, there are any other concerns or issues raised, I am prepared to work with you and make additional amendments, if necessary, that do not, that fall short of gutting the intent of what we're trying to do here, which is to give me the ability to appoint Mr. Hayden 
uh, for a finite period of time to lead the Brockton Police Department. Um, I think those are most of the issues that I, that I want to touch on. And again, I am committed to the model that we've had of a uniform police chief. I am pledging that upon the completion of Mr. Hayden's service, my intention, and I will appoint a uniform chief of police that complies with the age requirement along with all the other requirements. And it's my goal that during Mr. Hayden's service as the civilian police commissioner, not only will he be making positive changes, improving morale, improving community policing, reestablishing a relationship of trust with neighborhoods and residents, but that he will also be um, evaluating potential candidates from within the Brockton Police Department so that when his service does complete, he would make a recommendation to me as to who he feels would be best equipped to take the ball and run with it when he hands it off. So upon that, I'll conclude my remarks and make myself available for any questions from counselors. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, and as, as chairperson, let me just take a, a backward step because I think it's important that I probably read just what the, the, the fruit and, and vegetable is to this uh, ordinance so that the people at home have a clear understanding of just what we're doing here this evening. And again, this is hereby created and to establish the position of uh, Commissioner of Police and its purpose, the intent and the purpose of this ordinance to create and establish a position known as the Commissioner of Police. The position is designed to serve as the head of the police department in lieu of the chief of police, and such position shall be directly responsible to the mayor for the efficient and routine day-to-day -day operations of the police department. The Commissioner of Police shall have all the powers and duties of the chief of police as provided in Article 2 herein. Section 19-30, Commissioner of Police. A, appointment and term of office, there shall be a commissioner of police here and after referred to as the department head. The department head shall be appointed by the mayor subject to confirmation by the city council. B, qualifications. The department head shall be a person especially fitted by the education, training, and experience to perform the duties and exercise the powers of the office. C, powers and duties in lieu of the chief of police should the position of chief of police be vacant. The department head shall be responsible for the effective management, administration, and coordination of all operations within the department for all the fiscal and financial affairs of the department in the management, administration, and control of all personnel assigned to the department. The department head shall also have all of the duties and powers of the chief of police as provided in Article 2 herein. Letter D, the term of the appointment of the commissioner of police may not exceed 12 months, subject to a reappointment by the mayor and the confirmation of the city council. And E, the salary of the Commissioner of Police shall be $149,000 annually. This ordinance shall be effected upon uh, a passage. That is what we are dealing with this evening so that everybody has a clear understanding and everybody at home that is uh, uh, watching as well knows just what we are doing here in regards to this particular article. And Mr. Mr. Chair, could I make one final quick comment? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, and, and the other thing I wanted to add is that I encourage all the members of the Council to speak to members of the Brockton Police Department to get their impressions of Chief Hayden, who after all, only four days on the job has already positively impacted morale in the Brockton Police Department, has already begun instituting new policies and procedures, who has already increased the visibility of the Brockton Police Department in the neighborhoods of the city. And I have been, I've received dozens of positive responses from members of the Brockton Police Department regarding the dramatic positive impact Chief Hayden has had in just four days, and I have not heard anything negative. So I, I don't expect you to just take me at my word on that, but I encourage you, as you deliberate this ordinance, to speak to police officers that you know and get your own feedback in, term of the, in terms of the tremendous positive impact uh, he has had here in the city in just four days. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and members of the committee, it, it's our job and responsibility to remember that we are working as an ordinance change, not so much to uh, uh, the particular person, but we're working um, making a change to our ordinance from what it has always been for, for the last uh, many years. I think it's been over 40 years before we even had uh, even somebody from outside the city come in and even work in the police department. So that's what we're dealing with here uh, this evening as well. Um, members, do you have any questions from the mayor? Do you want to hear from other a guest how, how what um, direction would you like to go at this point? Mr. Chair. Councillor. Uh, I have some questions for the mayor. I'd like to 
Go right ahead. So, uh, Mr. Carpenter, Mr. Mayor, good to see good you again. Good evening, Councilor. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I've said this publicly, um, both at last night's meeting and previously. I want to be very supportive of your agenda. I'm a big believer in elections. Um, the citizens of Brockton had a choice. Uh, you campaigned, uh, and you are, new, you, are, you are my mayor, you're our mayor. So I think your success is intrinsically tied to the success of the city in areas where we agree. So uh, I'm inclined to support um, most of what you want to, to do uh, to make certain that you can deliver on your campaign promises. I do have some questions um, about the, the ordinance that um, concerns me um, and doesn't necessarily mean it will sway my decision to support it, but I think I we need to kind of talk some of those concerns through. Absolutely. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, Council, I came here in the spirit of working with the committee to, if this needs a little tweaking, to satisfy uh, the members of the council, I'm, I'm open-minded. Okay. So the big picture for me is that so there are two parts of this issue. There's an ordinance change, um, and then there's the appointment of the individual you're seeking to fill the position. So there are two different steps that people need to understand. So even if this ordinance were approved, uh, your appointment would have to be also approved in a, in a separate process. That's correct. Okay. So my... Um, so I just think it's, it's in, this is a big deal because we're essentially changing the way the city operates because you have an interest in one single individual. Correct. So we're sort of turning the whole system upside down and on its head to support your interest in this, in this individual. So this individual then, to me, becomes a very important focus of our questioning, which we can do most of it in the second half of this effort when the appointment is brought before us. Um, but I'd like for you to help me understand why you believe that there's a lack of leadership in the police department to the, to the degree that you think it's necessary for us to rewrite uh, the structure, uh, a structure in city government. Sure. So to, to address that on a couple of fronts, uh, you're right. Uh, the request for this ordinance is built around my desire to hire a specific individual to, uh, to lead the Brockton Police Department. Um, but, I mean, it's not a revolutionary model. I mean, there are civilian police commissioners in other jurisdictions across the country. So I'm, I'm asking for the ability to use a model that's been used elsewhere before. I'm not winging it, so to speak. Um, I think that the need for Chief Hayden comes on several fronts. The number one need being the critical need to make the streets and the neighborhoods of this city safer. And my firm belief that having spent over a year now with Chief Hayden, learning from him and discussing law enforcement and crime in cities and looking at his successful track record over decades of experience in the law enforcement uh, field, that he is uniquely positioned and he has a unique, a very unparalleled set of qualifications and experience that cannot be obtained anywhere else. And I want to take advantage of that opportunity. And I am asking for an ordinance that will have language crafted that will prevent me from using it again. I'm ha asking for an opportunity to use it one time because we need to stop the violence in this city. And we have an opportunity to bring in a leader who can affect that change. And so your, and your conclusion is that that leadership does not exist within the police department at the moment. My conclusion is that we have a couple things, a couple situations in the city that speak to the issue of leadership. I think prior to four days ago, we've got a morale issue within the Brockton Police Department, yes. And I base that on conversations with dozens and dozens of officers. I think Bob Hayden, with his leadership style, will change that. I also believe that we have an issue within many members of the city of Brockton in many neighborhoods of a distrustful relationship between the residents and the police department that also interferes with the, poli the police department's ability to reduce crime. And I also believe that Chief Hayden has the skills and the leadership and the experience to restore trust between residents and the police department. And I think those are two critical issues that we have to address that will be directly tied to um, our ability to reduce crime in the city. And then beyond that, the more textbook answer counselor of just looking at his decades of experience. And, you know, when we held the press conference on Friday at City Hall, 
I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that there were at least 100 officers present who served with or under Bob Hayden at some point in his career who took a Friday afternoon off to be in the city of Brockton to support his appointment as the interim chief here. And that speaks volumes to me. And I had a chance to have conversations with a lot of those individuals. <clears throat> and I've, I've met at least 100 people that have served with or under Bob Hayden. And I haven't found one yet that wouldn't walk across hot coals for him if he asked him to. So you and, are I, interested and I've never met anyone who, who served with him or under him that ever had anything negative to say about him. Okay. And just a couple more questions about Mr. Hayden and then a few about the ordinance. So um, I did listen to Mr. Hayden on the local radio station, I believe yesterday or the day before, and he mentioned that his connection to you was through um, Mr. Lawton, who was your campaign manager. Among and others. Among others. Yeah, we have actually... I came to get to, I knew, um, going back over a year ago, um, I knew Bob Hayden uh, through several mutual and friends, several mutual friends, mostly Boston police officers and also Judge Lawton. Um, and I, so I knew of Bob Hayden and had mutual friends with Bob Hayden but did not really have any type of direct personal relationship with him. Very early in the campaign, knowing and realizing that <coughs> crime in the city was the number one issue in the campaign, I reached out to him to see if he would advise me in the campaign. So, so, you, so you connected with Mr. Hayden absent Mr. Lawton, is that? What no, Mr. Suggesting? Lawton was involved in it, absolutely, along with... So who I, made the introduction? So that connection from you to Mr. Directly in the Hayden, campaign, I'm the sure connection? that Judge Lawton set up, I think the initial meeting had six or eight people at it um, that included Judge Lawton, that included... Uh, uh, Chief Hayden, mm -hmm. along with several others. Um, and that was the introduction. What evolved from there when, when Chief Hayden agreed to advise me on public safety in the campaign, then that began a process that evolved over the past year of me developing a close personal relationship with him and developing a just um, tremendous amount of faith and trust mm -hmm. in his ability. My last question about Mr. Hayden, I mean, at, at least in this component no, and of your, process. Your point is well taken. I mean, this ordinance is written in a way that uh, you know, this is the first step in a process in asking the council for the ordinance. And uh, upon you know, the adoption of an ordinance, it calls for my appointment to be subject to council approval. And you'll have right. full the full council will have the full opportunity to vet out Mr. Hayden as, as my nominee for that position. So my last question about Mr. Hayden before I talk about the ordinance. Um, so what you've proposed so far is, is costing the city money, and I'm not saying it's not a good investment, but it is costing a significant amount of money. And I want to hear from you, um, you know, with certainty that this maneuver isn't because of a lack of talent in the police department or uh, a chance happening with someone who may or may not be an incredible public servant. Um, I want to hear from you that this is certainly isn't a maneuver because it's pretty expensive. Well, uh, that I, I'll, I'll respectfully me, disagree me, and address that. I well, think you've got to put it in the context of the overall okay. budget. Well, I, which I'm not, again, I'm not yeah. debating the actual cost itself, but I uh, want to hear from you that this isn't, in fact, um, a decision made because of a political favor to yeah. anyone in your campaign or connected right. to your campaign. Right. Sure. So let me address that on a couple fronts. Um, Essentially, the net result of all of this, if, if the ordinance is successful and Mr. Hayden is approved, um, you're right, he's going to earn a salary of $149,000. I committed during the campaign to increasing the staff of the Brockton Police Department. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm making the first hire a captain. The additional hires will be cadets to be patrolmen in the future. Um, in essence, Chief Gomes reassuming his vacant captain slot uh, is, is the additional position here, and that position was already budgeted. The, the Hayden, as civilian commissioner of police, if approved, obviously that incurs a salary. But I put it in comparison, I mean, $150,000 plus the cost of benefits. Actually, Mr. Carpenter, if you, yeah. I mean, that really was, that was not really the focus of my question. Okay. So the, the, the focus of my question is, uh, I... Is it a political favor? Yes. Okay. Yes or no so question. to finish, just let me finish that okay. thought real quickly. Um, I can't believe that any counselor or anyone here suggests 
that we not improve public safety or that we endanger the public or not, not reduce crime for a $150,000 price tag and a 360 some odd million dollar budget. Uh, so I don't believe cost is a factor here. Um, I think Bob Hayden's credentials and reputation are, are unparalleled and speak for themselves. And the only reason I will nominate him to you is because he is the person I believe is best equipped to lead the Brockton Police Department. And to answer the other part of your question regarding a commentary on folks that may be serving right now, um, I think we have great men and women serving in the Brockton Police Department. I think right now they're outmanned and outgunned out in the streets of this city and underfinanced. Um, but do I believe that there is anyone else available today that possesses the skills and experience of Bob Hayden to lead this department? No. And I don't think that's a, a real indictment of anybody, but I do not believe that there's anyone within the department today that possesses Bob Hayden's experience and leadership and ability to lead this department today. Okay. Um, I may have to get back to that question later, but I'll go back on the um, issue of the structure of the ordinance. So actually, I was, the, I think we had a conversation. I was the one who was mostly concerned. I'm sorry, I can't speak for others. I expressed my concerns about making certain this appointment came before uh, the city council and, and we agreed and that's in the ordinance. So I um, appreciate that. And I've been committed to that all along and, and we specifically inserted that language. So to, to uh, I, I recognize the fact that that was an issue with this council in a prior administration and thought we'd address it straight head on and it doesn't need to be an issue this time. Um, and uh, this particular ordinance does not read that there's a residency requirement, right? Correct. And so I think everyone is well aware I support the residency requirement in the city. It would usually be addressed for a department head within an employment agreement. This is a temporary appointment to serve a term no more than 12 months. So even under the city's residency ordinance, uh, any new employee is allowed 12 months to re relocate to the city. This person can't serve more than 12 months. So I just don't believe it was necessary to address it in here. I think that the term limit addresses the residency issue. Um, and if there was a residency requirement, the person would have 12 months to relocate here. And Councilor, I would say that, I mean, there's a clear intent here for this to be a short term, not a long term appointment. And any time we have any type of interim appointment in the city, mm -hmm. the person is not subject to residency. So I mean, the only reason it's not being addressed there mm -hmm. is because of the short term nature of the appointment. And you know, I have my concerns and uh, dissatisfactions with the residency law. We, we agree with. to disagree on that one. Uh, Council. However, yeah. in terms of consistency, I think one of the recommendations I would make and would like to have it noted, um, Mr. Chairperson, is that one amendment to this um, ordinance, would, because there is a reappointment opportunity here. So this particular appointment, which is stated for 12 months, could in fact ex ex exceed beyond, could exceed 12 months and go into a second year or, or whatever. So right. only um, with council approval. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it could be with council approval without residency attached, the way it's written. So I would like to uh, have it amended that residency would be included with any reappointment that would take the term into um, a second year mm -hmm. and that the clock on that s began to tick at the first appointment and not with the reappointment. And mm -hmm. then we can deal with the whole question of residency later, but as long as right. it is consistent. Um, I think my colleagues may have some other questions around sunsetting this and yep. some other things, but I will give up the floor. Uh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, thank you, Council. And, and just a reminder to all that are here this evening, if you could just tone down the cell phones or put them on vibration or just keep your ring down, it would be appreciated very much. Um, and Councilors, again, as I just indicated early on, I want us to try to stay focused on the ordinance and not so much as to the person. Unfortunately, the ordinance came to us after some other things transpired with the former chief going back as being captain and, and now you have um, somebody that's been placed in as interim chief and now you have this before us and that particular person may be the lead, lead candidate uh, for this position but we need to stay focused on on this particular uh, ordinance in itself and, and not so much on, on the person. So um, at that time, any uh, councilors have any other questions for the mayor or do you want to proceed with uh, other guests? None for the mayor right now. Thank okay. Councilors all. 
the um, the Mr. Mayor, I guess at this point, but that's not to say. Be here, and I, I guess the final comment I would I would make to the members of the ordinance committee is to take a good look around the room and see the level of support that this person has for this ordinance. And uh, I don't know the last time you had a crowd like this at an ordinance committee at a <laughs> meeting, um, and I think that speaks volumes to the reputation uh, in the abilities of, of Chief Hayden. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. The uh, Next person we have listed is uh, Ms. Maureen Cruz, Personnel Director. I don't know if Maureen is present and if she could come up and join into um, conversation in regards to the, um, the change. Sure. Uh, the truthfully, I really have no comments at this point in time. This ordinance was um, a direction that the mayor wanted to go, and it was written by the law department. So at this point in time, I really have no comments. I can certainly answer questions later if you have any for me. Okay. Councilors? None right now. At this point? I'll say at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cruz. Thank you. The next guest that we have is Lieutenant Don Mills, and he's the Supervisor Association from the uh, Police Department. Lieutenant? <coughs> Good evening, Councilors. My name is Donnie Mills. I'm a lieutenant with the Brockton Police Department. I'm the president of the Brockton Police Supervisors Union. Uh, I represent its 39 members, those being the captains, lieutenants, and sergeants of the association. I'd like to thank you for inviting me this evening to uh, speak on, on this issue. However, I, I did not come, and nor do I tend to challenge or question the personal or professional achievements of Mr. Robert Hayden. Uh, however, the Brockton Police Supervisors Union is opposed to an ordinance change at this time that would radically change the command structure of the police department by putting its charge in the hands of a civilian. I'll ask you to consider many things before voting on this. I'd ask you to consider why. The consistent practice and history of the police department is we've had a sworn, duly appointed police officer to lead our department. For the most recent 40 years, that individual has been tapped from inside the police department someone who knows the city's infrastructure, knows the city's society, local government. Consider crimes. Crime has been spoken about. Major crimes, murder, manslaughter, rape, assault, kidnapping, down 5% in 2012, down 6% in 2013. It's 11% over the last two years, keeping in mind with what the mayor said with a police department that is drastically underfunded and understaffed. Makes me wonder how far those numbers could be if we were properly funded and properly staffed. Consider asking the question, Brockton, we are a municipality. We are a, we are a municipality formed by the state on a Plan B charter. Does this charter actually give the city the authority to change its police department from a sworn officer chief to a civilian commissioner? I can honestly say I do not have that answer. I, do ha ask, I am asking that it be looked into by my council. I would ask you to do the same of yours. But I cannot think of a police department in the Commonwealth who doesn't have a law enforcement officer at its head. Even in Boston, where we have a civilian police commissioner standing right beside him and maybe a half a step back is the chief law enforcement officer, the superintendent in chief, the top law enforcement officer, with no one else of equal rank. However, most importantly, before you cast a vote and consider legislative action, I would like you to consider the law. A change of this magnitude is a unilateral change in working conditions and is a mandatory condition of bargaining pursuant to Massachusetts General Law 150E ECHO. Last Friday, my association has sent the mayor and the law office a letter stating such and requesting an opportunity to bargain. This being said, I am asking you, the council, to give the union time to bargain. I feel it is only just to allow reasonable time to fulfill the law. That being said, I would also like to kindly remind the veteran councils that have been here. It wasn't long ago that I stood here before you with every union leader in the city, school side, city side, regarding health insurance. This council protected the union's right to bargain. And in return, the unions came back and conservatively saved the city $4.5 million. 
In short, you've protected our rights to bargain in the past. I'm asking you to protect those rights going forward. And I would ask you to give the union ample opportunity to bargain these changes with the mayor before taking any legislative action. Thank you for your time. God bless Brockton and God bless those who probably serve it every day. Thank you, Lieutenant. Question? Uh, yes, Councilor Councilor Moynihan. Moynihan. To the Lieutenant. Do you know of any municipalities with, that have only a commissioner and no chief? I'm sorry. Say that. Could Do you, you know of any municipalities that have only a commissioner uh, heading their police department and no chief? Those communities, I believe the title may be commissioner. However, he is a appointed law enforcement officer. But I, to answer your question, no. But it's my understanding that the title may be different, but the top law enforcement officer is a sworn officer with the rights of arrest. And uh, <clears throat> when you talk about collective bargaining on this, before we make a decision on this, what, what type of bargaining are we talking about? Is it you would bargain this change of... Uh, of uh, operations with the police department, <coughs> with the uh, city, and then would be receptive to having a uh, commissioner? Is that, is that where we're going with that, basically? My association very well may be receptive in collective bargaining. We are without a contract, as you know. Right. You know, we could work to, to form a contract. My association might even be willing to do a side letter on the one issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor. Any other? Uh, Councillor Stewart. Uh, Mr. Mills, uh, good to see you again. Uh, so, so the the issue for you or the association is that having a civilian at the at the helm of the police department is inherently a problem, or is the issue that you're not we're not going through a collective bargaining process to make that happen? Well, the real issue, in my in my opinion, lawfully is it is a mandatory condition of bargaining, and by law should be bargained with us before a chain takes effect. Now, on opinion, and many share. They don't necessarily agree that a civilian should lead, should lead the department. You know, we talked about mass general law, we talked about age. Again, I'm not here to challenge anyone, but I know if I took a leave of absence from the police department and returned and was gone more than five years, I would be required to go to the academy again before practicing law enforcement. Now, there is a reason why the legislature put such a, uh, a law in place. I think that's another question that may need to be answered. But you'd be willing to, I'm just trying to understand where the principles are, so, but you, you, you and your association would be willing to bargain to make that suitable or for you? No, I am not saying the association has the authority to bargain a change in state law. What I'm saying is, is we are willing to bargain. To have this, have to, a to have this change take place. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions? <laughs> Mr. Cruz? Uh, not, well, not right now, actually. I'll get a couple questions for our legal counsel okay. to do with that, Good. but uh, I'll wait till. Okay. Everyone else is all set. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you. Our next invited guest is Officer Bill Healy from the Patrol. Excuse me, Mr. Associate. Chair? Yes. Mr. Chair. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mayor. A couple of legal issues were raised by Lieutenant Mills in his testimony. I would suggest or ask for an opportunity for the city solicitor to also give his opinion on those legal issues that were raised. Uh, we, we can do that. When the time comes, I'll actually yeah. want to talk to our legal counsel. Okay. Do, uh, do we want to hear from our, our city solicitor is here this evening, so if anybody has any objections, um, we can ask him to speak on it. We do have our think, own legal counsel as well. Now that a couple of legal issues have been raised, I think in, in fairness you should hear the varying viewpoints. Do you, to him now? do you want to hear it now or do you want to wait and hear the last? Go ahead, Mr. Well, again, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead, Mr. Nezzarella. Yeah. Thank you for the courtesy. Thank you. Attorney uh, Nezzarella, who serves as our city solicitor here in the uh, city of Brockton. Attorney. Good evening, counselors. Uh, I heard the comment Mills, and I can respect the position from which he comes in the union uh, of which he represents. Uh, I do take issue with some of the representations relative to the mandatory bargaining. I did speak with, um, or we've had communication with the attorney for uh, the supervisor's union. I indicated I would um, consider discussing the issue of bargaining. I did not concede that it's a mandatory obligation on our part. However, um, as the mayor indicated, we want to make this process as amicable 
as possible so we are all working together. But I do not want to step forward in a position where I am not obligated to, but only where I believe will be uh, assisting the smooth transition and facilitation of this program and plan. There are, in fact, other communities, not just across the jurisdictions of the United States, but within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that have had a history of successful introduction of a non-uniformed police commissioner. Uh, those the, one of those communities is the town of Ashland that has introduced that uh, rather successfully. I have had extended conversations with uh, the city solicitor that represented the, uh, that process, which was also formerly a, uh, a mayor of a uh, city here in the Commonwealth as well. And we discussed some of the, uh, the fine points of uh, how to introduce that, uh, the types of ordinances, and the legitimacy of the ordinances. So it is my opinion there is no issue with the legitimacy of the ordinance. We are talking about the ordinance this evening, and as the chairperson correctly stated, this is not about the individual tonight. It's about whether or not we can have an ordinance in place that will facilitate that process. Uh, I also respect and, and, and agree with the comments of Lieutenant Mills that this board and this, this commission should consider the uh, supervisor's union. Also, we should consider the safety and well-being of the 100,000 residents of the city who, as the mayor correctly said, are screaming out for well-being, safety in this community. And if uh, the mayor's program of this new leadership of proven uh, success in past ventures can do the same here in Brockton, I think it should be considered equally, if not greater than, uh, the 35 people who also have an interest in this city. And I say that again with all due respect to not only the union, but all the, mem the men and the women who serve in the Brockton Police Department. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. Councilor, Councilor Cruz. Thank you. So, and again, it, I think it's very important that we separate the fact that tonight we're not talking about, and, and we know that the appointment is going to be Mr. Hayden if, if, that's, if this passes, but we're not talking about that. And this city has been famous historically for things that seemed to be a good idea at the time that come back to bite us many years later. What we need to do is make sure we can do it and that there's not going to be problems down the road. You were saying you don't feel like that if we pass this and it goes through that there'll be a, a problem uh, that we could be that we could lose a financial uh, issue with the with the unions in, in a lawsuit later. No, I, that's correct. You don't feel you feel we'd be fine. That's correct. Okay. Um, well, let me ask a couple of questions about the interim uh, uh, temporary. So, how long can the mayor app appoint for? I believe it's 60 days for an inter any interim appointment. Correct. That's correct. How many interim? How many times could he reappoint the person as an interim? That's undefined. You it's not stated in the statute. So I guess my question is, how much under the gun are we to get this done? He has 60 days from last well, Friday that he I guess is it, the I police guess chief. The answer to the question is, how much of a hurry are we to put a person in place and let them start their job? Well, he's doing the job now. And, and to give him some permanency under this ordinance. Okay, but so you can't answer me how long he could be. You can't tell me. Do we well, have 60 days or is that it? You have 60 days. And after that, if this isn't in place, Mr. he can't be reappointed? Is that what you're telling me? He could be reappointed. Okay. Well, that was my question. Could, could he be reappointed? So, so if we don't get this, if, if we're not under the gun to, to make sure we have well, this. Well, I, I personally think, and, and legally, it's ill-advised to, to have any type of dilatory delay in this. I don't think it acts well for the ordinance. I just don't think it acts well for the, uh, the image and position that's trying to be filled at that's this point. That's not what I asked you. I asked you legally, can he be reappointed if we yes. haven't gone through with this yet? Yes. That's, that's all I'm asking is, is how much are we, again, this city is famous. There are places and buildings and lots of things that seem like good ideas and then they weren't done properly. I, I just want to know whether... Fortunately, I had nothing to do with those. Well, and neither did I. <laughs> and neither did I, but I want to make sure I don't have anything to do with doing something incorrectly again. So that, that's, I, I that's all my question right. is. And, uh, uh, you know, that's a very important uh, 
issue. Now, one issue that I've had somebody bring to me, and it, uh, Ms. Uh, Lieutenant Mills brought it up. Are we, what powers, if we pass this, the civilian commissioner have all the same powers as a uniformed police officer? Um, actually, I would pro perhaps modify what his powers are, all the powers uh, absent arrest and uh, being issued a firearm. Okay, and then, I mean, that's very important, I mean, because we don't, some of those things we are going to need to tweak this, I think, because yes. that is very, very important. Um, be, and that's some of what I wanted to know is, uh, so he, he will be the department head, but he will not be able to make arrests, which we're not looking for our Correct. administrator to be doing that, but it's, it's an important distinction, and the public needs to know some of that, and he won't carry a, a firearm. He won't be issued a firearm. He won't be issued a city firearm. Correct. You seem to be saying something different from what no, I said. No, I'm saying he won't be issued a firearm. Okay. I said he won't carry a firearm. And I said he won't be issued a firearm. Okay, well, uh, and <laughs> let me ask you then. If he has a personal, if, he ha is, if he's licensed I know with a what personal weapon, he could carry a firearm. Okay. But he would not be issued via the Brockton Police Department of Firearms. Okay, and let me ask you a question and again, because these are the questions that we can't leave Those this, are fair we questions. can't leave gray area here. Does that open the city to any liability? No. Okay. I mean, that's a very important, and it was a very strong answer you gave me. So that's, th these are the things that I want to make sure. We don't leave ourselves open to any liabilities if we put this through, uh, because this is, this is a major change. We're doing uh, an entirely yeah. different... I mean, those, uh, those are insightful questions, and I'm, I'm glad they were raised. And uh, let me ask you a question that I may ask uh, our council, but you, you're aware of how the ordinances are written. And again, we don't write ordinances for individuals. Uh, clearly, this is being done because the mayor has an individual in mind, and he's talked about that when this ends, he's looking for this to end. Are we allowed to put, put a sunset clause in that this ends when a particular appointment ends? Yes. So we can put, uh, and how would we do that? Do we put that in by date? We certainly can't put it in by name, correct? Or by event. When this event. particular event occurs, then the agreement would terminate. The agreement will but terminate. The, correct. And, and we would have to then also put in that it would revert to the past ordinance. Correct. Okay. All right. That, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Any other uh, questions for Attorney Nazarella at this, at this point? Okay. Seeing none. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you. Um, I also just want to point out, and I, I didn't do it earlier, but uh, three other members of the council also uh, came in and, and joined us. That's Council at Large Moises Rodriguez, Councilor um, from Ward 6, Michelle Dubois, and Councilor from Ward 4, um, best known as the former chief of the police department, City Councilor Paul Studinsky. Um, and, and as you see here this evening, uh, all 11 members of the City Council are present, so you can see the importance that this ordinance is, uh, is carrying here to the City of Brockton and making sure that all councils are here, and I appreciate the fact that they are present here uh, with this uh, committee this evening. The last person that we have uh, listed is Officer Bill Healy from Patrolman Association, and I'm not sure if, if uh, Officer Healy is here or not. I didn't hear whether or not he was not going to be, but... Um, Something else might have come up, but uh, again, I don't see a reaction, so obviously he's not, uh, he's not here. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilor Stewart. Yeah, I'd like to um, motion to have, uh, or is, is there a representative here from Mamio? Yes. Yeah, so Mr. President, I'd like to have um, this representative from Mamio, which is the Massachusetts Association uh, of Minority Police Officers, to um, present as well if there's no objection. There are, a number of Brockton, there are a number of Brockton residents that are, are members of this association. Councilors? Um, no objection to this, but I think it's, we need to make sure we understand this was not a public hearing. Right, and we exactly. can't be adding um, many people to, to this. Uh, so, well, at this, at this time, Councilor, you're hearing from the other councilors that, I mean, we... I understand, but there's no objections. I'm hoping there's we There's no objections to it. Uh, we will allow this, uh, this one individual to uh, speak, and then we can... Uh, <laughs> Uh, where is that? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Gentlemen.
Good evening, counselors. I, I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, so I want to thank you for allowing me to do so. My name is Larry Ellison. I am the president of the Massachusetts Association of Minority Law Enforcement Officers. And part of that covers the state. A lot of the uh, members are uh, police officers in the city of Brockton. Brockton being as diverse city as it is, I think it's important that its police department be reflective of that. And I know the mayor, Carpenter, has, was seeming today to, that it was not just a slogan when he said it takes a carpenter to build a city by looking out and reaching out to someone like uh, Bobby Hayden to run the Brockton Police Department. I just want to say, you know, I think it does sometimes take looking outside to make change. I currently, as my position as the president of the association, have reached out numerous times by letter, by phone, to the former chief as well as the mayor to sit down to talk about some of the issues that Brockton, we feel, are lacking when it comes to diversity in the police department. Why is that important? Because that is a reflection of the city. Again, like I said, Boston is, uh, Brockton is very diverse, but its up mobility as far as people of color, officers of color, and the supervisory ranks is not there. And that's an issue that we would like to have with whomever being the chief. And I think Chief Hayden would definitely be someone who would be entertaining uh, bringing Brockton forward as far as its diversity and its ranks. Thank you. Thank you. I have no Sorry. questions. Thank no you. No questions. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, councils at this time, um, as I indicated, um, naturally we have some of our fellow councils here that would like to be heard, and I don't think anybody has any objections to that. Um, in respect to uh, his position as the uh, uh, president of the city council, I'm going to call upon uh, uh, the city council at large, uh, President uh, Robert Sullivan, to Thanks, say a few words first. I've never been known to say a few words, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, I do, I do uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I also want to recognize someone that's here in attendance tonight who served the city very, very well, and that's former Chief Manny Gomes, Captain Chief Gomes over there. I want to give you a... <laughs> now, as a counselor at large serving the entire city of Brockton, all seven wards, all 28 precincts, um, you know, I, I have uh, taken this job seriously, as all of you have, and I appointed you on this committee as such because I know you're going to do your due diligence. This is a, a really important issue uh, that the mayor has brought before us, and it's something that we need to uh, really uh, vet it out and dissect it. And although, uh, you know, we're discussing tonight, and I've met Mr. Hayden two times, uh, and, and I, I applaud him. Uh, he's really respected in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for law enforcement. Uh, and he does have some skill sets, I believe, that, that some of the uh, uh, people in Brockton don't have. But why I object to this and I'm opposed to this is because I would want to see promotions from within. Because the men and women that put their lives on the line serving us, protecting us in the city of Brockton, uh, th they do so because they want a better Brockton. And they have skill sets knowing the people, the places, the criminals, the drug activity locations that Mr. Hayden wouldn't have. But this isn't about an individual. This is about an ordinance before you tonight. However, the mayor did say that it was crafted for one specific individual. And I, I think there's a uh, danger in doing that because uh, if you do that and you craft it for an individual, uh, really the basis of the laws uh, of Brockton through our ordinance, through you, uh, is for all, all residents, the people that we serve, the people that we knock on the doors and ask for their vote, the taxpayers, our constituents. Uh, so the issues that I have with this proposed uh, ordinance is, is as such. I, I think that a chief uh, manning the department that has the experience and the know-how and has worked up the ranks in the city of Brockton has value. Absolutely. That, that's a fact. I, I think that $149,000 as a base salary, not including benefits, is something that, as elected officials, we really need to take a close look at. Now listen, I'm a father of three young kids, so if someone says, listen, you don't put a price tag on health and safety, absolutely. I grew up in the city of Brockton, my wife and I, we're not leaving here. We love the city. But I think as an elected official during tough economic times, and I've said this, and each and every one of you have said this, we have a fiscal responsibility for cost containment. We need to look at what we have, where we are. I said that on inaugural day as I stood up there. Now, Captain Gomes is being paid as a chief status, and, and the mayor, as the CEO of the city of Brockton, has the ability to do that. He can change department heads. Uh, other mayors have done it. Um, but let's think of it this way, ladies and gentlemen. We're paying two people for the same job, in essence. That's what it comes down to. 149 grand could be used to hire a new police officer, or maybe two, or buy the equipment, or buy uh, vehicles. Now, 
one of the things we do as city councilors, right, is we appropriate funds. And as nine years on the city council, and some of you have been here longer than I, we have never been anti-public safety, ever, right? We ratify the budget, we appropriate funds, we accept the hires that are put for us, we buy the guns, we ratify the state grants for public safety, the Shannon grant. These are things that we need to do to better our community. So I just want to go on record today saying um, I got 20 plus emails and phone calls this week saying, Councilor Sullivan, we do not want this. I got two emails from constituents that said, we do want this. And I responded as such, as an elected official serving the entire city of Brockton, being a taxpayer myself, being a Brocktonian, I have some strong reservations about this. This is not by any mean uh, a slap in the face to the mayor or to Mr. Hayden. This is an ordinance that, in my opinion, my humble opinion, is not needed. We can reject it. You as, the count, you as the council appointees of the committee have a tough decision to make. But what I will say is, at the end of the day, the full council, all 11 of us, have to take a vote. And it's going to be a vote that's going to really be in the best interest of the city of Brockton. So bear in mind, 149000 might be a blip on the radar when you're talking about $360 million. But paying two people for the same job is asinine, in my humble opinion. So with that, I'm going to respectfully ask, hopefully, uh, that you will vote this unfavorably. But that, that's all I want to say as one of 11 and as a husband and father and concerned resident. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Spadia. Can I have the no, 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 oh. no, 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 you can't. No, I can't. Councillors are going up here. Sorry. I'd like to tell the truth. Oh, Sit, sit down. Mr. Spadia, sit down, please. Mr. S Mr. Spadia, <laughs> another outburst and I'll have you removed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think Councillor. I was going to, uh, I was going to ask whichever other council would like to speak, please do so. Hi, um, my name is Michelle Dubois, and I'm the Ward 6 City Councilor. I represent the um, north <coughs> northeast section of the city. So the folks that rep that I that uh, uh, vote for me come from the Brookfield, Ashfield, Lithuanian Village area, um, and it's over mostly single-family home issues. So most of the people I represent uh, live in single-family homes. They have families like everybody, no matter where they live, that they love and they care about. And they, they purposefully chose to live where they live because um, they, me, they chose to live where they live because they care about the community and they care about um, law and order, just like everybody here this evening does or you wouldn't be here. Um, and I'm here speaking on their behalf. I don't think every single person I represent agrees with me and what I'm going to say, but I think that they did vote for me to communicate what I think is right to, to each of you. And I know that you feel the same way about um, the responsibility that you hold to represent the, the citizens of the city that you represent. When I, th when I see this ordinance, um, first off, it's, it's very vague. Um, I worked on uh, the medical marijuana ordinance with Councillor um, Ioneri and many of the other councillors on this um, council, and it took around um, six months and probably four different drafts with probably six different amendments to get it to the point that when the medical marijuana dispensary comes to the city, it's going to um, inflict the least amount of bother on families and children that have to walk to school, and all these things were taken into consideration. Um, we heard from many people on this. So the idea that we take six months to pass a medical marijuana ordinance and multiple people have their input heard, and that this ordinance um, about the public safety of the community is supposed to be put through in 60 days, I find offensive because I take my responsibilities as a city councillor um, seriously. I, 
as a city councillor, so everybody should know, um, a city councillor is not a full-time job. It's a part-time job. You can't do it full-time unless you can live on $10,000 a year, which most people cannot. So most people have full-time jobs, like myself, when they're city councillors. So even if I didn't have a full-time job, and my full-time job was to be here every single day in these halls um, doing government, I would have a lot of questions. I think that this committee should have um, people from the National Association of Police Officers come in, from the Massachusetts Department of Public Safety, and multiple other organizations and groups that have much more knowledge than you or I on public safety matters. So they can advise us on what to do. And I suggest that those people that come in are independent operators and not brought in by people that are against the issue or people that are for the issue, but are really looking at it from an objective standpoint, like I hope you and I are doing. Um, the state regulates who can be the chief of police. They give all these requirements. And I think it would be um, short-sighted of the City Council to just think that we can do a better job in 60 days, coming up with who should run our department. And my reading of this ordinance, the way it stands right now, I could go to a two-year program at Massasoit or a master's degree program at UMass Dartmouth in public safety, and I would be qualified to be the chief of police a commissioner of police. So I don't think that that is appropriate. And even though this person, in our, our mayor right now, Bill Carpenter, is going, says, says he's going to choose Mr. Hayden, first off, there's no assurances of that. He says that, and I trust his word, so I believe that that's what's going to happen. But who knows, life is, life is funny, so who knows what's really going to happen. But let's put that aside. If, you put this, if we put this ordinance on the books, what happens 10 years from now when there's a police officer, that, when there's a mayor who wants to appoint their, their friend, who's wonderful. Maybe they served admirably in the military. Maybe they have a master's degree in public, public policing and protection. Maybe in those ways, maybe that person is qualified. Who determines what qualifications means? In state law, they, they go down to how old you can be to be a chief of police. It's explicit. It's been worked on by multiple people over decades. And I am just nervous about the future ramifications of putting on an ordinance that, first off, is extremely vague, more vague than the medical marijuana ordinance, okay? And that's ridiculous. And that, number two, what is going to happen if we have to rush this through in 60 days and it goes in like this in the future? I'm not going to be a city councilor forever, but I was born in Brockton. I'm 40 years old now, and I'm pretty sure that when I pass away, I'm probably going to be buried around here somewhere. And I don't want to be 80 and look at what happened when I was 40 and say, what the heck? We've got like someone that, that knows how to make bubble gum as the, as the commissioner of police. You don't know what, what the ramifications of your actions are going to be, and I don't know. And so unless this can really can be honed in, and I think that it's a bad idea. And just in closing, so everyone here knows, this, everything I say has nothing to do with Mr. Hayden, because I think he's a wonderful person. He said, I looked at his resume, he's qualified. There's nothing to do with him. I believe in good government. If you guys have heard of Goo Goos, what's good government? Good government is transparency. Good government is stability. Good government is not just depending on one mayor or one leader of the city to look down upon us with kindness and choose the right thing to do. Good government is insisting that no matter who is in that position, we have rules in place that make sure that the decisions that are being made are minimal, minimally protective, no matter who's there, if they are good or they are bad. And I think that this ordinance would, be, would not fall into the, um, the theme of good government as it stands right now. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Any other uh, councils that uh, wish to be be heard on the uh, on the matter? 
Okay. Mr. Chairman, can, we, uh, can I speak to Mr. Nezzarella on one issue? Councilor Gennapoli, uh, requesting that uh, Attorney Nezzarella come to the podium. Good, good evening, Mr. Nezzarella. Uh, just a, just a, a, a question on the, uh, the ordinance itself. There's, this ordinance here, if it's, if it's passed, does it have to go to the state or, or, or we have total control? It doesn't need home rule petition. You have control, in which is an important point that uh, as uh, with the eloquence of Councilor Dubois, uh, someone of questionable competence would not be able to fill that position because it needs the confirmation of the city council. So it's not a sole unilateral appointment by the mayor. It goes through confirmation of the city council. And we've never made a mistake, so. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we hope we haven't made a mistake. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the, uh, okay, and the, 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 the reasoning to, for this only to be a one-year uh, That's correct. Commitment and not a three-year commitment like all department heads are under three years is uh, Mr. Hayden wants to move on in a year. And in, in, Mr. Uh, uh, the mayor's go. intention was to utilize the experience, wisdom of Mr. Hayden so that he could more appropriately make a selection of a uniform police chief within that year's time. Yeah. So the intention is that it does not extend beyond the one year. Okay. All right. That, that I understand. Um, I, okay. I don't, want, I don't know how much leeway you're going to give me on this next question, but I... But I'll, I, I'll, no, let you, no, I'll let you know, Council. No, 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 I'm sure we're going to be, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure we're going to be continuing sure on that. We, I, can, I have questions about uh, the, the salary and the benefits and all, and we're not talking about that this evening. It's so, it's well, it's there, right. but well, all right, okay. Go, go Whatever you want to. All right. Well, is uh, Mr. Condon here? Um, yes. Does yes, anyone yes. have any objections to? Well. Objection. Yeah, can I, is that, is that all right if we bring Mr. Condon in? Because he's the chief financial officer. Jay, we're talking about some heavy money here. In benefits and things like that. Uh, the salary of uh, 149000 which I don't have a problem with. Uh, we, we, we're going to be paying you know, the former chief's salary and Mr. Hayden's salary. What benefits go with this position? Well, as the ordinance is written, I think the only thing that's stated is uh, the uh, right to the ordinance types of uh, sick days and uh, vacation days. I think the anticipation would be that the individual would also participate in the health insurance uh, program. That he will be... Okay, I, I don't want to bring up Mr. Hayward. Well, that's, that's a personal thing. Uh, com company vehicle? Uh, that, Ple would be, that would be a matter of a contract. It's not in the ordinance. I think that would be a matter of the contract uh, between the individual and the city. Well, the, the after, reason why... After the ordinance is created. Okay. If he's entitled to all the, the city yes. benefits, the health insurance, the life insurance, yeah. um, the disability insurance, how much more of a figure is this than 149000 well, it would probably be about 75% uh, of, say, eighteen to twenty thousand dollars, depending on what the uh, cost of the plan would be. Okay, so we you know, we normally pay 75% of the cost of insurance. Oh, oh. So I, I'd say you know a safe guess would be another twenty thousand dollars. Okay, all right. Thank thank you, Mr. Con. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. You all set, Council? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. <coughs> Council is. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairperson, I have another question. This may be a question for uh, the city solicitor. Or it could be actually a question for our legal counsel, but I'll, I'll ask you, Mr. Let me go first. <laughs> uh, so uh, I also expressed this in last night's uh, finance committee meeting. Part of the issue here and why we're going through this rigmarole is because we had a three-year contract with the previous police chief, which had become the norm, I, I believe, under when... Uh, under uh, Mayor Harrington. And so if you have a three-year contract with a police chief and the mayor's term is only two years, conceivably you can have a police chief who is uh, your um, default choice for two years unless you decide to make a change, which is what we're going through at the moment. 
Um, and so my concern with where we are presently is if we have this ordinance that allows Mr. Hayden to, or whomever it may be in this position, hold the position of police commissioner for one year, uh, with the idea then that we're going to search for uh, a police chief that will be put in place 12 months from now, approximately. If that's another three-year term or agreement, then conceivably after the next election, we could be faced with a similar, very expensive choice of a mayor looking to find a different police chief and having to buy out that police chief and bring in someone else. Um, so part of what I'm interested in is um, attaching this. Uh, so the, the contracts that exist, and maybe this is a personnel question, and so whoever is the right person to ask this question for me, I ask that person to come to the podium. But these three-year agreements with police chief, there's, there's no statute in place that states it has to be three years. It could be any length of time, correct? You're correct. All right. So th the history of our having three-year agreements with police chiefs, what's, what is the history of that? Where is that coming from? What's the rationale for that? And maybe this is a question for um, Maureen Cruz. Yeah. Just to, if I, if I might just inter intervene, uh, uh, Councillor, I, I believe even the history of a three-year contract started, if I'm not mistaken, under the administration of uh, former Mayor Jack Units. Okay. I think the first three-year contract that was given to uh, a person to be the chief of police was Chief Stadinsky. I may be incorrect with that, but I believe that's how it started. Um, so I, and maybe this is a question for Mr. Gilday, um, but I'd be interested in finding out um, how do we legislate having the terms of the police chief coterminous with the mayor so we're not faced with these financial possibilities uh, in each election season, and can that be attached as a rider to this particular Ordinance. No, I don't believe it would be effective if you sought to attach it as a rider to the ordinance. With respect to the term of the office of a department head, I believe you'd have to have a charter change or a special act. Um, chapter 41, Section 108N authorizes the appointing authority, who is the mayor in the city of Brockton, to enter into a contract with a chief of police. And that contract prevails over any conflicting ordinance or bylaw. So even if you sought to limit the term pursuant to a bylaw or an ordinance, the mayor would have the authority under state law to override that ordinance. So in order to remedy that situation, if you consider that to be a problem, you would have to have a home rule petition and have the legislature make a change specific to Brockton. I agree with that. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor Stewart. Councilor, uh, Apple, you had a question? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman. Can I, uh, Mr. Mayor, would you please take the podium? I just have a, just a couple of questions, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely. And uh, thank, thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for bringing, bringing the crowd. Um, when, when you drafted this ordinance, okay, who advised you? Uh, you had, you know, I mean, you're friends with the, the, the former... Uh, judge and you have you have our legal counsel who advised you that you could roll this through in 60 days I don't think I've ever exactly made that statement the, so two two parts I use the advice of the city solicitor's office in preparing the uh, um, the ordinance draft that I presented to you the 60 day is uh, nothing to do with the ordinance. The 60 days was that's what state law under Chapter 61A allows the mayor to appoint a interim department head. So the, the 60 day time frame derives from what state law allows me to do on an interim basis and had no direct correlation to the, um, to the ordinance. I think in informal conversations with various counselors. I think this seemed to be a pretty uniform opinion, you know, that this could be addressed within a 60-day time frame, but that was never part of my proposal. I've never stated a time frame. The 60-day time period is strictly, that's what the state law allows me, that's the time frame, to appoint uh, an interim chief of police. Okay, well, and any, any interim department head. Because we found, we found out tonight, I guess, that if this doesn't go through in 60 days, that Mr. Hayden can be reappointed for another 30 or 60 days. 
I, you know, if, if the, I would say, I guess, if the ordinance is not successful, I would work with the solicitor to look at what all my options are. And I would make the best decision I could in the best interest of the residents of the city. Uh, so that would be a plan B? Um, I think based upon what I heard this evening, it's one option. One option. All right. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, I, um, Councilman. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if I could, uh, as it's, it's, it's clear that the committee is going to continue to deliberate uh, the ordinance I proposed, um, I think I heard uh, several concerns raised, but I think there seem to be two primary concerns uh, raised here this evening. Um, one was what potential future use this ordinance might have in the future with some other mayor, um, and the other is what are the, uh, what's the threshold, the requirements of the, a person that would be eligible to be appointed to the position. So I would like to respectfully submit uh, to the committee for your consideration two amendments to the draft that I gave you to address those two um, issues that have been raised here tonight. Not asking for a decision, just asking for you to consider them as you continue to work on potential language to this ordinance. Um, the first one, um, the first one states, I'm going to put my glasses on to make sure I read it okay. exactly right. Do you have an issue, Councilor? Yeah, Carpenter, do you have a printout that we can Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, yeah. Could, could you please hand them out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my Chief of Staff, Bob Buckley, will provide everyone on the committee with a copy. Actually, all of the councilors with a copy as a courtesy. So the first, the first amendment I will, would you like me to wait a minute, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, why don't you just... Let everybody get a copy of it so they can. Sure. Uh, and again, just to, just to make it clear that this is just something for us to. I'm submitting this for your consideration. Right, consideration, mm -hmm. nothing to be a part of. In, in the spirit of us. trying to work together to craft an ordinance that everyone agrees on. So there are actually the, the two ordinances that should have been handed out, the two amendments, correct that, two amendments. The first one says, the authority to so appoint under this section shall expire at such time as the position of Commissioner of Police becomes vacant, either as a result of death, resignation, or retirement. Uh, this is what I am told is what a couple councilors have referred to as a sunset clause. That would ensure that this ordinance would only have the ability to be used once for once app one appointment, and it would, it would sunset itself out when that one appointee left. And I think that's pretty strong, clear language uh, that was recommended to me to give that sunset provision. The other amendment uh, that I'm asking the committee to, co uh, to consider is regarding the issue around qualifications. And it reads, the department head shall be a person with a minimum of 25 years of law enforcement experience who has already attained the rank of chief of police within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I think that very narrowly defines the types of people that could even be considered for appointment. And I think it addresses some of the concerns that have been raised regarding uh, whether the person being appointed as a civilian commissioner of police would have the same type of uh, ability and experience as someone that would be considered for chief of police. So I uh, would respectfully submit both of those amendments to the committee for uh, consideration. Okay. We, we only have just the first one you read oh. us. We didn't have the second one. Uh, and Mr. Chairperson. He's got copies of them. He'll bring them over. Okay. okay. Councilor Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, Mr. Carpenter, as... Yeah. as I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I think the second one is being passed out now. So as it reads, the, uh, the first amendment concerning the, the sunset clause, mm -hmm. um, it's... Yep. The way the ordinance is written, this individual can be reappointed uh, with approval of the city council. Um, I think theoretically the possibility would exist that if I wanted to ask that person to stay on and serve another year, right. I, could, I could request that, but it would have to come back in front of the council for council approval. I, I could not do that unilaterally. I could only do that if the council agreed that it was a good idea. 
I understood. Sometimes I have these pauses because my mind has to process what I'm about to say. So you jump in before I actually finish my question. So my, the question, of, I, the concern that I have actually is around um, possibly including um, as part of the, the sunset provision that if that reappointment is not approved by the city council, this ordinance also then is discontinued. I Certainly, I think that would be consistent with what we're trying to accomplish. Right. I think what we're trying to do is add a little language that assures everybody that this uh, this ordinance would only have the it would be a disposable ordinance, so to speak, it would only have the ability to be used once, and then it would sunset itself out after the one use. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councilor. Councilors, any other Councilor Cruz? Uh, yeah, just one or two for the mayor, and then one for the uh, city solicitor. Um, you said, and again, I know what you think, and I've been doing a lot of, you know, looking online. I don't want to get into the person tonight because it's not, right. he's not being appointed tonight. But so I know what At such point, there's do. an opportunity the person will be duly vetted out, uh, the nominee would be duly vetted out by the council. So, uh, I, you know, I know, but I know what you're looking to do, and you feel, and, you know, obviously, you feel that at this time there's nobody in the uniformed uh, supervisor's uh, positions that would be the right person. But you feel that in a year there will be? I feel that, uh, sh sure, now let me explain the difference to you, Councillor, for, from my standpoint. Uh, first of all, I think that there are going to be some opportunities for some supervising officers to mentor under Chief Hayden while he's here, and they would be more qualified a year from now than, than today. Um, I think the statement, to try to be careful, I made earlier, is I didn't think there was anyone in the ranks who possess the same experience and reputation in leadership as Chief Hayden does. Um, it's not that there may not be someone there that could serve, but I didn't think that they would possess the same background, experience, leadership, and uh, existing relationships with other law enforcement agencies as Mr. Hayden does. So the first point is that there's a mentoring opportunity. And the second one is, and I think I mentioned this earlier, but let me make it clear, if Mr. Hayden is successfully appointed as a civilian commissioner of police, one of the things we've already talked about and one of the parts of his mission will be to assist me in evaluating by working with people for a year, evaluating potential candidates to be a permanent uniform chief and, and being prepared to make a recommendation to me upon the completion of his service. So I think in the long run, that's a much better model rather than me having to make a decision, you know, within 60 days amongst a group of people that I by and large do not know uh, to have the ability for Mr. Hayden to be there running the department for a year in addition to the other things we talked about, him getting to know and evaluating the personnel that we have and uh, making a recommendation to me as to who he thinks would be best suited to continue the work as he hands off the baton. Thank you. And then I'd like uh, Mr. Nezrell up for a minute. Last Friday afternoon, and, you know, because I'm a layman, you know, I don't understand the process. So the supervisor union went to court. Explain what happened Friday, and then I have some questions about going to the future on that. The, an attorney for the supervisor's union had appeared in court prior to last Friday and, and received a temporary injunction <coughs> refraining, restraining <coughs> excuse me, the mayor from making an appointment. The uh, hearing that took place was absent anyone from the law department. <coughs> it was simply the attorney for the uh, union. <coughs> excuse me. The judge ordered a return day whereby the city could come forth and make its presentation as to why the preliminary injunction should not stand and why the mayor should be able to make his appointment. <clears throat> the hearing took place at 2 p.m. on Friday. The union attorney presented his case as to why the injunction should remain in effect. I presented my position as to why the injunction should be wiped away. The judge adopted my position, my position being the position of the city of Brockton, 
and he extinguished the preliminary injunction, thereby allowing the mayor to exercise his right under ordinance to make the exclusive um, appointment of the police chief, uh, and in fact he did so later on in that afternoon. Okay, so that just wipes out the temporary injunction. The, so is there currently any lawsuit uh, from the supervisor union still on? Is, it, is that all over now? Is that case completely done? I have not seen a document. I do understand from conversation that the um, police uh, supervisors association was uh, dismayed and aggrieved by the denial of the judge and they are contemplating an appeal to the appeals court, which we will be prepared for as well. And again, I'm, I'm mostly asking you, you know, banal banalities of law. So they're still going, in other words, they're not, not suing the city because of the appointment. They still are looking for an injunction, or I guess they're not doing anything right now. They're My question, to let me, to let me make enjoin, it simple. To enjoin that, uh, that appointment. Let me make it simple. If they sue, and we in the meantime pass this ordinance, which takes precedent? And, and um, let me rephrase. So if they sue and the judge if the, agrees with them. If, if the ordinance is adopted by the city council, yep. that would trump the action by the judge because then there is further ground and authority for the city to make the, for the mayor to make the appointment. So if we pass this, the judge, that becomes a moot Moot case. Correct. Okay. Okay. And, and again, um, I feel rather confident the city will prevail uh, because, again, there is clear precedent throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to have a civilian in charge of a police force. It's one of the, actually one of the tenets of our Constitution, the United States Constitution, from our founding fathers whereby a civilian has led the military up until this day, only a non-military person can lead all the, as commander-in-chief, can lead the military. So this is not an unprecedented move. Well, we're not talking it, the military. It, well, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's on the same scale, and I think it's important to realize, because there were statements made, that only someone from the inside is aware of where the drugs, the criminals, and the violence are. Well. That's also for that very skilled set of supervisors to advise whoever is at the helm. Thank you. All set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Question to, excuse me, I'm going to have a question to the legal counsel if I might. Because taking Counselor Cruz's question that he was asking the city solicitor, you being my legal counsel, I'd like to hear your take on just that same situation that was just transpired here with, with that question to uh, the city solicitor. The action filed by the city, excuse me, filed against the city by the union sought a declaration that a particular individual could not serve as in the position of chief of police because of certain state laws. Um, the ordinance before you seeks to establish the position of civilian police commissioner. Right. So it, even if you pass the ordinance, that case still could go on and they could have a declaration by the court. But if the ordinance passed, then subject to confirmation by the council, the mayor could appoint a civilian police commissioner. Okay. And that's assuming the legitimacy of the ordinance and everything else, which are issues that haven't been totally vetted, if you will. Right. Okay. The, the case with the um, union in the city continues because the the injunction was denied, um, but the union, I believe, is considering whether to seek a single justice appeal. And whether or not they go to the single justice, the underlying court case in the Superior Court continues on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Clarifies it from Council Moynihan. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, question to uh, Mayor Carpenter, please. Thank you, uh, Attorney Gill. Good evening. Good evening, Councilor. Obviously, there's a lot of um, complications, I'll say, to this. Is there any reason why um, we could not appoint an interim police chief 
the existing captains, lieutenants, whatever, and hire um, Mr. Hayden as a consultant for this year or six months and go implement his plan that you have uh, obviously run on. Right. So, um, for, the, uh, for the year or whatever. And doing it that way, we could pay him whatever, 50000 for you being a consultant, whatever it is. Because I think class, I think the councils last night were saying class is an issue. Um, I understand you don't put a cost on safety, public safety, and what have you. But from the complications I'm seeing here and possible lawsuits or what have you, is there a way of implementing your plan with Mr. Hayden as taking an interim police chief from the department and having him hired as a consultant? Is there um, a way around that? I suppose along the lines of answering an earlier question, that's probably another option. If there's not an ordinance at the end of 60 days, I personally don't think it's a very good option. I think one of the great benefits of Chief Hayden is his leadership ability, his, his um, long proven track record of his, of his ability to motivate and inspire and lead men and women under him. And I think that model would undermine his ability to do that. And that's why I would like him to lead the department. And I think in just four days, I can see tangible results from his leadership. Okay, thank you. I think, I think Councilor DiNapoli, did you have a Mr. question? Chairman, yes. Uh, Mr. Nazarella, the other day we spoke, uh, as, you, as, as you're aware, I spoke with you the other day because I spoke to the Attorney General and I spoke to you, and for some reason, this Massachusetts General Law 32 and 1, age of the retirement age of the police department, nobody has an answer. Martha Copley wouldn't discuss it. <laughs> She's running for governor. I don't, you know, and you're an attorney. You know, the problem is, what is the law? Nobody knows. We have a law nobody knows. I, so I don't know. So you're confusing me. Well, you haven't asked me a question yet, so I can... I, I want to know what ch Chapter 32 is in the Mass General Law. I have it here. Mr. Chairman, I, I think the mayor clearly stated what the law was earlier in his statement, that a police officer cannot be over the age of 65, and that's the reason why the mayor was seeking the Civilian Police Commission Commissioner Ordinance. That's so there's no ambiguity in the law. The law is clear that, that when a police officer reaches the age of 65, they're required to retire. Did, did the mayor violate the law, law of appointing no. Mr. Hayden as, as interim chief? I'm not here to call into question the legality of the actions of the mayor. I mean, but there's no. a court case pending on that matter. The union sought an injunction. The court declined to issue an injunction. The court case continues. So that issue remains to be decided okay. by the Superior Court in Plymouth County. Okay. You, you went, thank you very much, Mr. Gilday. It, to be continued. Through you to Council Denapoli, just a, I did a little research <clears throat> on going uh, in a cons and uh, our legal counsel, Mr. Gilday, uh, Attorney Gilday. It takes a home rule petition if you want to extend anybody's uh, police chief to a couple of years or what have you that was done with that article you showed me. Was it last year? The, year there, there have been, Mr. Through the Chair, there have been a number of cases in the Commonwealth by which the legislature has passed a special act to authorize police officers who have reached the age of 65 to continue to serve. But it's been through an act of the legislature. Which takes six months, six, six weeks, six months, or whatever. I mean, that's, but that's the only, and I think they also mentioned in that article about there will be no additional benefits as far as uh, pension or Oh, no, no additional retirement benefits. Retirement, retirement or what yes. have you. Think, so I think that's about the only way you get, you get past that uh, age, age factor. Thank you. Councilors. Um, you all said councilors today? All set. Councilors? Uh, yeah. One, one last conversation or question for the mayor, please. Uh, Mr. Carpenter. I thought you had the last question earlier. Well, you know, they keep adding up. <laughs> um, so I will say that I uh, am going to support this measure. Uh, I've thought about it for a, a, a uh, 
Um, but I, I'm, 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 I'm doing so with uh, an understanding um, in my mind about why we're in this position, and I, I kind of want to vet my thinking with you. Sure. So, so what I've heard sort of implicitly and explicitly is that you've made an assessment that the police department at its highest level needs to be reformed um, or, or uh, reformed and that, uh, that you think it's most efficient and more effective to have someone from the outside help to implement those reforms because a person who is from the inside and may hold that position for a longer period of time would be weighed down by having to have certain types of relationships to run the department and so the kinds of reforms that you're looking for will be very tough ones and it's best to have someone come in make the necessary reforms who's not interested in holding that job forever who is freed up to make the best decisions in the best interest of the city and that department and then in some respects set up this new police department uh, in a way that the permanent police chief has a better playing field. Um, that's what I'm reading from all of this. And so it's not simply that the brass within the police to force, it's not, I don't, I'm not reading it as that they do not necessarily have the skills or the experience, but they have uh, the relationships that will prevent them from making real change. And frankly, as a city councilor, I've seen how relationships can get away, get in the way of ensuring that we're doing the people's business. And so that's why I can appreciate where I think you're going with this. Um, so I will support it if we're in agreement that that's sort of the overall strategy. And then secondly, I will support it if it contingent upon there being two amendments to this um, order. Um, or ordinance. One is that uh, that there's a residency requirement attached after the second year, like all other positions in the city. Uh, sh uh, and then secondly, that the sunset clause is uh, is a, becomes an attachment, and that as part of that <coughs> attachment, there is a provision that sa states also that if in fact the reappointment is not approved by the city council that this law, this ordinance also sunsets. Um, if we're in agreement with that, I, I can support this and look forward to um, having a discussion about who the next appointee yeah. is. And, and I believe the, uh, the, the first part, you're thinking around change. Uh, I, I do agree with what you said, but I just want to be careful that that's one aspect. It's not the only aspect, but it's one aspect. And I do believe that um, I would like to affect some change within the police department. I think there are some advantages to, for having someone from the outside uh, come in to do that. Um, I think it's been a, you know, it's funny, I, I come from the school committee background and, and so, you know, on the school side you have superintendents of schools. And on the school side we went through the opposite of what we have in the police. I think we had three consecutive superintendents that came from outside Brockton. So when this last appointment came up of Superintendent Smith. I think there was a strong feeling within the committee that it was time to promote someone from within. We'd had an extended period of uh, superintendents that had come from outside. I think I feel exactly the opposite in the situation with the police because in the police department it's been decades. 40 years. Decades. 40 years of con constantly chiefs coming from within the ranks. And I agree. I want to encourage and promote people to come up through the ranks. But I also do believe that sometimes the time is right to bring in a new manager from the outside to affect change who does not have relationships with all the people that he's going to make uh, decisions on. And, um, but not just anyone from the outside, someone with the extensive experience and reputation of someone like Chief Hayden. I don't take it lightly, and just to reiterate one more time, that Part of the plan with Chief Hayden is for him to be evaluating and making recommendations to me of individuals from within the ranks that he believed would be best suited to serve as a permanent chief of police. Exclusively from within the ranks no. or from out? Okay. I'm Not exclusively, no. Okay. But I, I think we're, I, I want to look there first, Counselor. I, I think I'd like to look there first, and I think that would probably be part of uh, the chief's recommendation to me, whether, whether he thinks we have that next leader there or not is part of it, 
And if we do, then who is that okay, person? And, and, and candidly, I've heard that that decision has already been made, and I'm assuming you're going to tell me that has absolutely not been made. Not. Okay, absolutely I not. Okay. Are there okay. some people there that I think highly of uh, that right I would yeah. uh, okay. uh, like to move to, like to see the chief move to positions of more responsibility? Absolutely. Um, I am 100% open-minded and have no preconceptions as to who the next chief would be. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilors, what's our uh, I, uh, Councilor Cruz? I'm looking at, in fact, these two amendments, and they fall into the places where I have some had some issues with what we. Uh, I still think we're a little uh, a little too loose in this. And again, my thought is, uh, I think the judge actually used the term last Friday that there was no permanent damage. Mr. Hayden is there right now doing the job. I'd like to look into a little bit more and tightening up these qualifications for the future and all. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion to postpone to the next uh, next ordinance meeting. I have a motion to second. postpone this item to the next ordinance on the motion. committee. It's been seconded by Councilor DiNapoli on the motion. Council Council Cruz, uh, I could add, I have uh, a day just working on the sunset. If I'd like to make a motion to probably add that sunset clause or not now if that's uh, or you want to just postpone it. I'd, well I'd like to look into I mean I'm not prepared to vote on okay. any of them tonight All right. because, because I do think we need to make sure we're putting those in properly I, I, right. and again I, uh, same as uh, what Council Stewart's interested in I happen to agree with you right. know put the residency in for after year but we can make those motions I'm just not prepared to uh, how I want to make those motions tonight because for, I don't think we necessarily need 25 years mm -hmm. you know we need s some qualifications that we feel comfortable with, but even this is fairly broad. So um, I just think we'll get just ready for the next meeting. And, and, and just on that motion, I'm agreeable to what Councillor Cruz is saying. I think we, we need to take a look at it. We need to do some other fine tuning. I want to sit down and talk with my legal counsel in regards to some of these matters as well. We've heard from the city solicitor, and, and that's fine. But we have our legal counsel that, that we pay and works with us as a council, and I want to make sure that he's doing his job and make sure he's covering our back as well. So I have those same types of concerns and I think we need to do that. So the motion's been made and seconded that we're going to postpone this to the next ordinance meeting. All in favor of that? Opposed? So it's been uh, postponed and we will set a meeting date probably within the next few days. So we'll uh, convene again probably within 10 or 12 days. Any other business to come before this uh, ordinance uh, committee? Seeing none, this meeting's adjourned.